Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Mad Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. Today I got a service call for a water cooled heat pump. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Mad Tech. Today we are working on a packaged water cooled heat pump and we got a complaint. The system is turning on and off. Alright, so here's our control panel. So let's begin by taking off the cover. Let's see what's going on. Okay, right away I see a blinking red light. Let's go ahead and get a light set up over here and take a further look. Alright, we now have light and we have a red LED blinking. Anytime you have some sort of LED blinking, check to look around on a control panel to see if there's any indications. Over here, we have a fault indicator so let's see what the red stands for so if the red is flashing we have a high pressure fault before resetting any unit it's very important to take a look to see if you have any indicators I just connected the gauges to the system and we are equalized at about 120 PSIG and to reset this Let's see, we're going to follow the power. And turn it on and off. All right, so we have a pull switch here. Turn it off. Turn it back on. Okay, as you can see, now we have a green light. I wanna see this thing start and I wanna see the pressures to see what's going on as far as the high side. I'm gonna set my meter to volts. I wanna check if the thermostat is calling. So I do have a video on how to check that. I will link that above. So let's see between R and Y. They're in cooling mode at the moment. We have 14.4 volts. Seems a bit low. You should have around 24. But according to this, it's not calling. So let's go ahead and find that thermostat and raise it up. All right, turned it on. 325 pound head. 350. 375. All right, we have a head pressure problem, 400. 425, oh man, scared me. <laughs> All right, so it's definitely a problem. 400 pound head pressure, okay. So since this is a water cooled unit, instead of a fan to cool off the condenser, they use water. Yeah, that's the outlet. This is the inlet. This has a strainer, so this is the inlet. Water is really not, not cold, not hot. So pretend if it was a fan, you need the fan running to cool it off. So since this is water, we need water running to cool it off. Hand valves are open. So first things first, you're gonna wanna Definitely pull that strainer. If that strainer's clogged, it could increase the pressure. And let's take it from there. Let's take it step by step. So to pull the strainer, we're gonna wanna close off the supply and return for the water. And that is right here. So let's close this one and close that one. So now these two are closed, right? Pipes coming in. Then we have a little valve here. The handle is gone, but that's no problem. I think they already tried to pull this strainer. I can see the water was here. So, let's see. Let's open this one up and drain the remaining water. Oh, that's muddy. Now this valve here as well where if you wanna drain a little more, We'll go ahead and do that. 
sometimes you can't get all the water out you might need a little air to move it out so when you take off that strainer you don't want to get hit in the face this water's green but that's because it's the treatment for the cooling tower so now we're safe let's go ahead and open this one up Slightly dirty, yes. But I don't think that's gonna cause a 425 head pressure, but regardless, let's go ahead and clean this up and take it to the next step. Strainer's nice and clean now. We can go ahead and possibly put a little bit of Teflon tape on the threads, close this back up, and open the water lines to get it flowing again. But that really wasn't enough to have it go off on 425 head pressure. This unit definitely has issues. I have, I have heard this giving trouble in the past and it seems to be the same thing. If all the other units are operating properly, it's gotta be something with this unit itself. And I do have a little trick for this. So what I do is I try to flush out the condenser because all those little fragments could be stuck inside that condenser or Maybe we have air in the piping where we're not moving properly. Not exactly sure, but what I wanna do is try to flush it out one side at a time. So let's see how we could do that. First things first, we gotta put this back. All right, that's tight. Let's go ahead and make sure we close this before we open up the water. We're gonna get blasted with it. So that's that. Okay, so what I want to do is get a garden hose because these are garden fittings. Attach on each end and flush out this coil and, and see if there's any sediment in there or what's inside and see if the strainer and that makes a difference. All right, the strainer and the valve are back on. I'm gonna open the water just to make sure I don't have any leaks. Everything's good and I can hear the water moving, so there's pressure in there. I have a feeling this water cooled condenser is just full of dirt. So, what I want to try to do is let's see, maybe close one valve, open it, and like let it flush. I want to see if I can flush out this condenser, if I can get something out of there. Maybe I can run a little pump, circulate it through with the water supply closed, so maybe I can get the sediment out of there that's what I feel is going on and I would definitely recommend an internal descaling of this condenser tubing there could be a chance this whole thing is just corroded inside and, and scaled up where we don't have good water flow so let's see what I can do I need to get some hoses all right so I got a hose on the outlet and a bucket so I want to see if I if I close the outlet so now we're gonna have water on the inlet going through the coil and then it's gonna push out of here. See what kind of uh, stuff comes out of here. One thing I did notice, it's a little vent here. What if that's plugged? So you only want to get to the highest point of water. I might be able to dump some air through here. So pretty much what I was doing, I was just, I dumped some water from here and I dumped some water from there. Try messing with the valves. But what I do is try to go from the top maybe there's air in the system preventing it from moving water all right well that's a constant flow of water right now so 
let's, let's see if this made any difference. Power, let's check the pressures. All right, fan motor started. Let's see these pressures. Let's see if I can just jump it out for now. Okay. R22 system, got a 60 pound back, about a 200 head. And that's good. Let's keep an eye on these pressures. Whenever there's a head pressure problem for a water-cooled unit, it's like if it was an air-cooled unit and the fan wasn't running. If we don't have water moving for the water-cooled system, there could be a couple of reasons for that the pumps for the cooling tower maybe is not working but if every other unit in the building is working uh, I'm not gonna suspect that definitely have pressure in these uh, water lines sometimes there's uh, air in the piping and if there's air in the piping it can't move and there is uh, a vent up top over there so if that vent is plugged you know we're not gonna move water so I did dump water from the top of the piping so that would remove the air the air will come to the top so if there's air in the piping you know you're gonna want to dump the water it seems to be holding pretty good right now so it seemed to be that the water was not moving due to air so in that case bleed it out try to bleed it out from the top if you have no other choice unscrew the vent and just let it air come out through there and yeah I did bring this little pump right here this little transfer pump so what I would recommend is to descale these condenser coils because I know for a fact they've never done that here and these units are old at least 20 years old so going to keep an eye on this and give an update. Alright, so the pressure is balanced out on the high side at 225 head pressure. We're just about 60 pounds, a little bit above on the back side for R22. That's actually good pressures here. I'm not sure if you guys can read it, but we got 47.8 degrees. We got 48 degrees coming out of the supply. So this is super cold. Fan is running. So this system is operating I did find out the exact issue so they just switched over to summer mode so in the winter they was trying they were running the cooling tower dry so he said that he just they just did some work on it and they just basically opened the water up so a bunch of dirt could have got packed inside here and at the same time there could be air in the piping that vent really looks bad it's all you can see some water was coming out of there it could be actually blocked up so by you know running this hose from the from the top luckily they have a port there I was able to dump the water and get the air out of the piping to where now the system is operating and we have water flow so my recommendation would be to replace that air vent and at the same time that happens I want to come back to run a pump and descale the tubing internally this would be the pump little pony pump super cool and yeah I'm gonna keep an eye on this unit just to you know double check pressures and temperatures so the thing doesn't just jump out on us while I leave and that's pretty much it seemed to be a bit of a dirty strainer and air in the piping so yeah if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment subscribe catch you all next time